about cutting spending, given the $19 trillion debt. But according to one report, America needs $3.6 trillion in infrastructure spending by 2020. Here in South Carolina, 11 percent of bridges are considered structurally deficient, costing drivers a billion dollars a year in auto repairs. What is your plan to fix the ailing roads and bridges across the country without breaking the bank? Well, I'm glad you asked it, Maria. Here's, here's our plan. Uh, we've all been talking about tax reform tonight, and paying for infrastructure is caught right up in tax reform. If you reform the corporate tax system in this country, which, as I mentioned before, is the highest rate in the world, and we double tax, as you know. And what that's led to is over $2 trillion of American companies' monies that are being kept offshore because they don't want to pay the second tax. And who can blame them? They pay tax once overseas. They don't want to pay 35 percent tax on the way back. So beside reforming that tax code, bringing it down to 25 percent and eliminating those special interest loopholes that the lobbyists and the lawyers and the accountants have given, bring that rate down to 25 percent, but also a one-time repatriation of that money, bring the money, the $2 trillion, back to the United States, we'll tax it that one time at 8 and 3 quarter percent, because 35 percent of zero is zero. But 8 and 3 quarter percent of $2 trillion is a lot of money, and I would then dedicate that money to rebuilding infrastructure here in this country. It would not necessitate us raising any taxes. It would bring the money back into the United States to help build jobs by American companies and get our economy moving again and growing at a much higher rate. And it would rebuild those roads and bridges and tunnels that you were talking about. And, and, and the last piece of this, Marie, is this. You know, the fact is that this president has penalized corporations in America. He's penalized, he doesn't understand that, that what that does is hurt hardworking taxpayers. You see middle class wages go backwards $3,700 during the Obama administration. That's wrong for hardworking taxpayers in this country. We'd rebuild infrastructure that would also create jobs in this country, and we'd work with the states to do it the right way, to do it more efficiently and more effectively. And remember this, I'm credible on this for this reason. Americans for Tax Reform says that I have vetoed more tax increases than any governor in American history. We don't need to raise taxes to get this done. We need to make the government run smarter and better and reform this corporate tax system, bring that money back to the United States to build jobs and rebuild our infrastructure, and we need to use it also to protect our grid from terrorists. All of those things are important and all those things would happen in a Christie administration. Thank you, sir. Dr. Carson, it is true U.S. companies have $2 trillion in cash sitting overseas right now. That could be used for investment and jobs in America. Also, several companies right now are pursuing mergers to move their corporate headquarters abroad and take advantage of much lower taxes. What will you do to stop the flow of companies building cash away from America and those leaving America altogether? Well, I would uh, suggest a fair tax system, and that's what we have proposed. A flat tax uh, for everybody, no exemptions, no deductions, no shelters, because some people have a better capability of taking advantage of those things than others. You know, and, and then the other thing we have to do is stop spending so much money. Um, you know, I, my, my mother taught me this. You know, she only had a third grade education, but, you know, she knew how to stretch a dollar. I mean, she would drive a car until it wouldn't make a sound and then gather up all her coins and buy a new car. Uh, in fact, if my mother were Secretary of Treasury, we would not be in a deficit situation. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is, you know, if we fix the taxation system, make it absolutely fair, and get rid of all of the con incredible uh, regulations, because every regulation is a tax. It's a, you know, on goods and services, and it's the most regressive tax that there is. You know, when you go into the store and buy a box of uh, laundry detergent and the price has gone up, you know, 50 cents because of regulations, a poor person notices that, a rich person does not. Middle class may notice it when they get to the cash register and everything is costing more money. And we are killing our, our, our people like this. And Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton will say, it's those evil rich people. It's not the evil rich people, it's the evil government that is, that is putting all these regulations on us so that we can that survive. Thank you, sir. Maria, Senator Rubio. Maria, what you were talking about just now is called corporate inversion. It's one of the biggest problems our country has. Right now, corporations by the thousands are thinking of leaving our country. 
with the jobs, leave them behind. They're leaving because of taxes, but they're also leaving because they can't get their money back in. And everybody agrees, Democrats and Republicans, that it should come back in, but they can't get along. They can't even make a deal. Here's a case they both agree they can't make a deal. We have to do something. Corporate inversion is one of the biggest problems we have. So many companies are going to leave our country. Which is why we raise it. Senator, Senator Rubio, thank you, Mr. Trump. Thank you. One of the biggest fiscal challenges facing our country is our entitlement programs, particularly Social Security and Medicare. What policies will you put forward to make sure these programs are more financially secure? Well, first let me address the tax issue because it's related to the entitlement issue. And I want to thank you for holding a substantive debate where we can have debates about these key issues on taxes. Here's the one thing I'm not going to do. I'm not going to have something that Ted described in his tax plan. It's called a value-added value tax. It is a tax you find in many companies in Europe where basically businesses now will have to pay a tax both on the money they make, but they also have to pay taxes on the money they pay their employees. And that's why they have it in Europe, because it's a way to blindfold the people. That's what Ronald Reagan said. Ronald Reagan opposed the VAT tax because he said it was a way to blindfold the people so the true cost of government was not there for them. Now, you can, you, can, you can support one now that's very low, but what is to prevent a future liberal president or liberal Congress from coming back and not just raising the income tax, but also raising that VAT tax? And that VAT tax is really bad for seniors. Because seniors, if they are retired, are no longer learning or earning an income from a job. And therefore, they don't get the income tax break. But their prices are going to be higher because the VAT tax is embedded in both the prices that businesses are charging and in the wages they pay their employees. When I am president of the United States, I'm going to side with Ronald Reagan on this and not Nancy Pelosi, and we are not having a VAT tax. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Maria, Maria, I assume Senator I can Cruz, yes, you respond were, you were to mentioned, that. Yes, of course. Well, Marco has been floating this attack for a few weeks now, uh, but the problem is the business flat tax in my proposal is not a VAT. A VAT is imposed as a sales tax when you buy a good. This is a business flat tax. It is imposed on businesses, and a critical piece that Marco seems to be missing is that this 16 percent business flat tax enables us to eliminate the corporate income tax. It goes away. It enables us to eliminate the death tax. If you're a farmer, if you're a rancher, if you're a small business owner, the death tax is gone. We eliminate the payroll tax. We eliminate the Obamacare taxes. And listen, there's a real difference between Marco's tax plan and mine. Mine gives every American a simple flat tax of 10 percent. Marco's top tax rate is 35 percent. My tax plan enables you to fill out your taxes on a postcard so we can abolish the IRS. Marco leaves the IRS code in with all of the complexity. We need to break the Washington cartel, and the only way to do it is end all the subsidies and all the mandates and have a simple flat tax. And the final observation, he invoked Ronald Reagan. I would note that Art Laffer, Ronald Reagan's chief economic advisor, has written publicly that my simple flat tax is the best tax plan of any of the individuals on this stage because it produces economic growth, it raises wages, and it helps everyone Thank from the Senator. very poorest but, to the very richest. But that's Thank not an accurate description of the plan. Because, first of all, you may rename the IRS, but you're not going to abolish the IRS because there has to be some agency that's going to collect your VAT tax. Someone's going to be collecting this tax. Number, in fact, Ronald Reagan's Treasury, when Ronald Reagan's Treasury looked at the VAT tax, you know what they found? that they were going to have to hire 20,000 new IRS agents to collect it. The second point, it doesn't eliminate the corporate tax or the payroll tax. Businesses will now have to pay 16% on the money they make. They will also have to pay 16% on the money they pay their employees. So there are people watching tonight in business. If you are now hit on a 60% tax on both your income and on the wages you pay your employees, where are you going to get that money from? You're going to get it by paying your employees less and charging your customers more. That is a tax. The difference is you don't see it on the bill. And that's why Ronald Reagan said that it was a blindfold. You blindfold the American people so they cannot see the true cost of government. Now, 16% is what the rate Ted wants it at. But what happens if, God forbid, the next Barack Obama takes over and the next Nancy Pelosi and the next Harry Reid, and they decide we're going to raise it to 30% plus we're going to raise the income tax to 30%. Now you've got Europe. Marco, we're not Maria, doing that why, right. Why, Maria, why, why should individuals, Maria, yeah. Maria, Marco, I just why like, should individuals like to, pay Maria, I'd like to interrupt. instead of 10%? Maria, I'd like to, I'd like to interrupt, I'd like to interrupt this Obama? debate on the floor of the Senate. 
um, to actually answer the question you asked, which was on entitlements. Do you remember that, everybody? This was a question on entitlements. Oh, I'll answer and the, the, and the reason. And the reason, now you already had your chance, Mark, you blew it. Um, here's the thing. <laughs> The fact, is, the, the fact is, the reason why, if you'll answer the, the fact is, question. the fact is, the reason why that no one wants to answer entitlements up here is because it's hard. It's a hard problem. And I'm the only one up on this stage who back in April put forward a detailed entitlement reform plan that will save over $1 trillion, save Social Security, save Medicare, and avoid this. Avoid what Hillary Rodham Clinton will do to you, because what she will do is come in and she will raise Social Security taxes. Bernie Sanders has already said it, and she is just one or two more poll drops down from even moving further left than she's moved already to get to the left of Bernie on this. We have seniors out there who are scared to death because this Congress, this one that we have right now, just stole $150 billion dollars from the Social Security Retirement Fund to give it to the Social Security Disability Fund. A Republican Congress did that. And the fact is it was wrong. And they, con they consorted with Barack Obama to steal from Social Security. We need to reform Social Security. Mine's the only plan that saves over a trillion dollars. And that's why I'm asking your answering your question. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. Can I just add, add one very quick thing? And I just, I just want to say, uh, you know, last week we released our tax plan and multiple reputable uh, journals, including the Wall Street Journal, said ours is the best. Just want to get that out there. Just saying. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Carson. Coming up, how would the candidates protect America and another terror attack if we were to see it? But first, you can join us live on stage during the commercial break right from home. Go to Facebook.com slash Fox Business. We'll be streaming live and answering your questions during this break next. More from South Carolina coming up. Stay with us.